This netcast is brought to you by Deerswood, the Excel experts, helping you get the most out of Excel. Hello, we're going to do two netcasts today regarding um, using pivot tables for financial reporting. So if we look um, at uh, some of the base data that we're going to work with, the first thing I've got here is a trial balance, so uh, a made up chart of accounts. Um, uh, and you know, I've got 144 accounts in there. Uh, ones are assets, twos are liabilities, um, fives are sales, six are cost of sales, sevens overheads. And you can see we've got a hierarchy here, level zero, level one, and level two to help us report and categorize each of the particular groups of accounts. Um, I've then made up a trial balance, um, just bringing in all of the accounts here and then I've got the first one is the balance brought forward and I've just got the uh, balance sheet uh, accounts which is uh, what you would get uh, when you when you kind of start the year and again the balance sheet should sum to zero uh, using as no, as is normal uh, positive for credits uh, positive for debits and negative for credits so you can see that our balance sheet balances for port forwards and then what I've done is um, uh, for the P&L uh, the result of the P&L rolls into cash so it's as if we're paying everything with cash and then uh, again we get the trial balance to sum to zero which is what you would expect if you are a good accountant. Um, the other thing we've got year to date values here because uh, generally you want to bring a year to date value out of your ledger just in case somebody's opened a prior period and posted an adjustment um, and if you bring out monthly data you don't just you don't generally see that um, but if you bring out year to date you always know you're dealing with the right set of numbers. Um, a couple of tips here the first thing is the um, number formatting you'll see that uh, we've got uh, red and brackets for negative numbers and we uh, I've just created a custom number format that I always use so we've got negative for uh, we've got brackets and red for negative numbers and then positive numbers are are just black uh, we use the comma to separate the thousands uh, we use the underscore to line up the um, decimal point not that we have one here but we could quite easily add two decimal points and then we have the negative here uh, to uh, to ensure that uh, we have a little space um, uh, because we're using brackets here if we want the numbers to line up we need to have a little space there so when we use that you can see that all the numbers line up just perfectly and the final thing I've done here is I have written a custom function to help us bring the um, the hierarchy into this table so that we can um, easily produce a pivot table and what this does this uh, this uh, this uh, the parameters it sends to the custom function is the account and the level so let's say we're uh, debtors which is 1020 so 1020 and what that will do is move along here until it finds a value and if here it looks at level 0 it's going to go up until it finds that number there. So let's just have a look at that custom function. So you can see we pass the account and the level and we're going to return a string. Um, we first of all the, the string we're going to return the first thing we do is is to get the the cells which is uh, one one or two or three columns back and we, we're looking up on the chart of accounts worksheet and if that cell is blank which is we saw it was then actually we're going to loop round and we're going to um, uh, move, move up the row until we find a value so that's how that works okay great so we've explained all the basics so we're just going to create a pivot table, select the data, insert the pivot table. We're going to bring in to the row level 1 and level 2. Uh, we're going to bring in the values, which is... We're going to bring in 
the opening balance and the first three periods that actually should drop in as sum okay so we're getting there now I'm kind of old-fashioned and like to display things in the classic pivot table so you can uh, so we can view things a little bit more easily uh, we don't need the we don't need any subtotals for this um, but we do want to put in our custom format for the numbers before we can start to read what we've got here so there we go okay so what's this telling us uh, the other thing we want to do is just group the balance sheet accounts together and then let's group the P&L And actually, I do want a. I do want a total, and then let's just have a look at the design and choose something that's a little bit nicer. That's what I like. So now we are in a position to start to read some of the data here. So we've got the current assets, long-term assets, current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and we can see that. Um, the only account that's changing here is cash and cash equivalents and that is going to be changing by the amount that we've got in the P&L. So there we go, that's the first one. We'll look at introducing some formulas in the pivot table in the second netcast. Find us at dearswood.co.uk, helping you get the most out of Excel.